for the first time, the extended regular season comes to a close in the National Football League, and that means it's the best time of year. It's time to crown a champion, but the path to the Super Bowl runs deep as seven teams from each conference will give it their best shot to try to win the Vince Lombardi Trophy. And it all starts this Saturday with playoff contests in the AFC and the NFC. A lot of great matchups, and we are going to break them down for you today, right here on the NFL Experience on the Amityville Broadcasting Network. I'm Matt Grice, joined by Aiden Fonsetto. Aiden, how are you today? I'm good. How are you, Mr. Grice? I am doing great. Uh, an exciting week of football coming up. A lot of uh, very close games. An exciting week from last week to see who is going to get in. Uh, a quick eulogy for the New Orleans Saints who were able to win this past Sunday and didn't get in because of events that happened. Uh, congratulations to the Pittsburgh Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger who, by the skin of their teeth, kicking a field goal at the end of the game, they advance as the last seed in the AFC. Um, but none of that matters anymore because now it's do or die. Yep. Do or die in football, it's not always a good thing. Cause it because it puts a lot of pressure on the team and the coaches. So it's like if I don't win, it could possibly be the end. I could get traded. I can become a free agent. So there's a lot of pressure on everyone's back. Well, it was Black Monday just yesterday in the NFL, which is when all the coaches that are going to lose their job usually do. Three coaches fired so far. Potentially more to come, but that's more off-season talk. Uh, I, I don't know what will happen with the teams that are in the playoffs, but we have six games to break down, and they are all fantastic. So I think we should get started. And we will start our journey in the NFC. And uh, we'll start with the Philadelphia Eagles and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Actually, a quick note, the Green Bay Packers, they get the bye. And remember, there's only one bye in each conference this year because they changed the format. Seven teams get in instead of six. And the seventh seed, the Philadelphia Eagles. They come into the contest 9-8, and eight, and they travel to Tampa Bay to take on Tom Brady and the Bucs. 13-4, most wins in the history of the Bucs organization. They are the defending champs, and this is where we will start. Tampa Bay, they have Tom Brady. Great defense, great offense. I think Tom Brady's going to carry him. But the offense is also going to do their job. Defense also going to do their job, but I think the Eagles are not going to be able to pull it off. So the question is, who are the Philadelphia Eagles? Now, the Eagles are coming out of a division that is not very good. Dallas is one of the better teams in the league, as we know, and we'll talk about that game in a little bit. But the Washington football team and the New York Giants are two bottom feeders. Uh, but the Eagles still made it. And at 9-8, and eight, barely getting in as the seventh seed, Last week, they played the Dallas Cowboys, and knowing that they were not going to get a bye week, they didn't play any of their starters. It was all the reserves, including a quarterback, Jalen Hurts, who will be back on the field this week for the Philadelphia Eagles. I wonder if that's going to make a difference down in Tampa. It might, but at the same time, he has over 3,000 yards, 14 touchdowns, and he's doing great this season, but... I don't think he's going to be able to pull it off against the Tampa Bay. Well, I think they're one of the best teams right now. So I, I agree with you in the sense that I think Tampa Bay wins this game outright. But I think the Eagles are a team that came on stronger as the season went on. At the beginning of the year, they were written off. And Jalen Hurts is going to present an interesting problem for that Bucks defense. And here's what it is. Not only can Jalen Hurts beat you through the air, but... He can scramble as well. In fact, he had 784 yards on the ground this year as a quarterback. So he is a dual threat. And if he can be successful in both of those facets of the game, it could give the Bucks problems. But at the end of the day, Tom Brady and, and the offense that he leads, even without Antonio Brown, who technically hasn't been cut yet, um, that, that's a dynamic offense there. And I think uh, the Bucks win this game. But what's your prediction? Give me a score. I'm going to say... 35 to 21. All right. I'm going to say that, that Tom Brady and his offense does the job, but Brady is very um, very good at controlling the clock, and I think he will not score big plays. He doesn't have a big arm at this point in his career, 
Uh, so I, I don't think they'll score that much, but I could see it being somewhere around uh, 24 to 24 to 13 bucks. Let's move on to the next game. Uh, also in the NFC, it involves the three seed Dallas Cowboys hosting the six seed San Francisco 49ers. And the Dallas Cowboys were able to drop down to the third seed with a win and a couple of things going their way this past weekend. But um, for the San Francisco 49ers, they defeated the Rams, a game in which people didn't think the Niners would win. Niners finished 10 and 7, Dallas 12 and 5. But this should be a very interesting matchup as you go back to some of those really fun playoff matchups between the Cowboys and the Niners going back to the 80s and the 90s. I think it's going to be a very close game. Dak Prescott has an arm still, unlike Garoppolo on the Niners, who's really. A lot of people consider Garoppolo more of a game manager, sort of like an Alex Smith. He's not going to lose it for you. He's not going to necessarily win it for you either. Although, again, if you watched their game against the Rams, uh, who we're going to talk about the Rams in a minute, Rams dropped to the fourth seed because San Francisco defeated them. Um, Garoppolo led uh, a very important drive at the end of the game in an overtime to, to help his team get that win. So he's certainly capable of winning a big game. He is. But at the same time, Prescott can, he has a good offense and arguably one of the best defense. Um, he has over 4,000 yards for passing, which means he's definitely able to do a passing game. His running game with Ezekiel Elliott, he's, Ezekiel Elliott's pretty low this season. He's only got like 1,000 yards in running. But what do you think? So I, I think Dallas on paper is a juggernaut, and statistically they're a juggernaut. They have uh, you know Trevon Diggs who led the league in interceptions. They had uh, their their first round draft pick Mika Parsons with 13 sacks. He didn't play last week, and neither did Diggs. Uh, COVID protocol and, and just getting ready, so they will be fresh going into this game. Um, and offensively, we we know their wide receivers are stacked. Um, you know, Ceedee Lamb, Amari Cooper, Ezekiel Elliott by two yards, gets breaks the 1,000 in rushing yard barrier. But this is a team, it's the most penalized team in the league. They have a lot of problems, many times with coaching. Their kicker has been inconsistent, especially with extra points. Um, and San Francisco's defense really impressed me. Uh, I, uh, I think San Francisco is going to pull the upset off here. I think the Dallas offense has a hard time getting going because they're going to put a lot of pressure on Zeke. And um, Garoppolo will do just enough. And I think, I'm going to say... A final score of 24 to 17, San Francisco upsets the Cowboys. Wow, that's a very interesting way of putting the score. What are your thoughts? I think that Cowboys are going to pull it off 27 to 14. We'll see. Moving on to the final game in the NFC, and uh, this one will actually be the first ever playoff game on a Monday night. And it involves the Arizona Cardinals and the Rams. The Los Angeles Rams, 12 and 5, Cardinals 11 and 6. And uh, this, is the, this is a game where a lot of people didn't expect to see this. A lot of people thought that Arizona would be playing Dallas again. Right now, Arizona is a, is a strange team. They're really hard to, to get an understanding because they went through a, a really bad slump, five straight losses. Then they come out, they, they beat up the Cowboys pretty good on the road. Um, they do it without Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray comes back. Arizona ends up losing to Seattle, which is why they drop in, in the standings here. And now they go against the Rams team coming off that loss to San Francisco. And uh, I don't know how high I am on, on the Rams either, although I have to say this is a team that was going for it with some of the moves they made this year. Matthew, Matthew Stafford, Stafford has looked a little shaky at times, but his numbers were very, very good with 41 touchdowns this year. He's got a lot of throwing yards. But I think it's going to be a running game for them. Uh, and a defensive game. I mean, don't forget Aaron Darnold, one of the best defensive tackles in, in the entire NFL. He is a, a beast, a force to be reckoned with. Um, you know, what is Kyler Murray going to be? You know, Kyler Murray, again, he's coming off an injury. This is a guy that likes to scramble. He gets chased a lot. Uh, and he's going against a defense that has a very good pass rush, that knows how to put pressure on the quarterback. I, I don't know that this is the, the best matchup for Arizona, but what are your thoughts? What's your prediction? My prediction is that Arizona Arizona does not pull it off. Rams win 28 to 16. So I agree with you. I think the Rams will come out ahead in this one. Um, 
I, I think the Rams actually could could get a big win. I, I, I like your I'm gonna say 31 31 13. I think Arizona's gonna have a hard time moving the ball in this contest. Uh, again, this is the NFL experience right here on the Amityville Broadcasting Network. Mr. Grice, Aiden joining you as we preview this weekend's super wild card opening round in the NFL playoffs. And now it's time to jump to the AFC and the number one seed. They're the only team to get a week off in the AFC. The Tennessee Titans, they've earned it, 12-5 and five record. But we'll start with our first game, which involves the Pittsburgh Steelers at the number seven seed. I had mentioned them before of how they barely got in. And, and they're going to have a tough task. They're going on the road to face Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. That is going to be an amazing game, in my opinion. I think Ben Roethlisberger is not going to be able to pull it off. But I think it's going to be like a very close game like it was last week. Except I think it's going to be a little bit less points for them. I think it's going to be 28 Kansas City Chiefs to 13 um, Pittsburgh Steelers. I, I, think it's, I think it's going to be a blowout. I really do. Pittsburgh barely snuck in. Um, Mike Tomlin's one of the best coaches in the NFL. And I think he's done a lot with a little this year. Ben Roethlisberger... He's a shell of himself at this point. He really is. I hate to say it. He's future Hall of Famer, Super Bowl winning quarterback. He's not the same guy. His quarterback rating this year, 34.8, which is, which is awful. Um, 22 touchdowns, which is respectable. But for him, uh, I don't know that, that he would be happy with those numbers. Um, they don't have the offense you'd expect, and they don't have the dominant defense. They're not the physical team that they were even just a couple of years ago. And they're going on the road to face Andy Reid's Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, this is a team that's got a Super Bowl win and uh, a couple of deep runs in the playoffs. Patrick Mahomes, you could argue, probably right behind Aaron Rodgers in terms of uh, best quarterbacks in the league. Kansas City got off to a slow start this year, and people started to write them off. And then they got hot. Of course, they got hot against the Dallas Cowboys. That was kind of the win that uh, was the linchpin for the rest of their season. The Chiefs finished 12-5. and five. Uh, They're coming off a win against the Denver Broncos. Um, you know, Mahomes, 37 touchdown passes, almost 5,000 yards passing up, tons and tons of weapons. Uh, Darnell Williams, Tyreek Hill. I think Kansas City has no problem putting Pittsburgh to bed. Uh, this one I, I could see being 34 to 10 as a final. So this next game I find very interesting because of the division rival that comes with it. And this is uh, the... The sixth seed taking on the three seed, and it's an AFC East matchup. The Buffalo Bills winning the division again with an 11 and six record, hosting the New England Patriots 10 and seven with a rookie quarterback, Mac Jones, and the greatest head coach in history in Bill Belichick. I think it's going to be a blowout. I think the Bills are going to win 34 to 12. Wow! Only because Bill Belichick. Great coach. Mac Jones, an um, amazing quarterback with over 22 touchdowns. He's got 3,000 passing yards. He's doing great this season, but I think the Bills are going to be able to pull it off. They have Stephon Diggs, jo Josh Allen, who has 4,000 passing yards. I think, they're, I think it's going to be a blowout. So here's where I'm going to disagree with you. A lot of people predicted the Bills to go to the Super Bowl this year, and I actually think Buffalo – underachieved now I, I know that they finished 11 and 6 and had a successful season but there were times where the bills were up and down and you weren't quite sure which team this was going to be go back a few weeks ago when these two teams met up in the freezing cold and bill belichick had mac jones throw the football three times in the game that was it everything else was a run because of the wind and the frigid temperatures and bill belichick and his genius ends up winning the game can bill belichick do that with a rookie quarterback I don't know because Buffalo is a very good team. I expect Josh Allen to have a big game for the Bills. Um, you know, I think a lot of it will, will have to be how Mac Jones handles it as a rookie. But again, I think Belichick, the way he coaches this game, he's going to do what he's done all season. He's going to do everything he can to protect his rookie quarterback. Mac Jones didn't light up the charts this year, but he was put in a system where he was protected. They ran the safe plays and... I'm sure nothing's going to change in the postseason in terms of how they use them. At the end of the day, I think the Bills win, but it's a lot closer. I think the Bills win in a, a really down and dirty good football game. I'm going to say 24 to 20. Very close game. 
Uh, and that brings us to our final game of the week, and that involves the number five-seeded Raiders visiting the number four-seeded Cincinnati Bengals. Raiders 10-7. and seven. Bengals 10-7. and seven. Go ahead. I think that the Raiders are going to pull it off against the Bengals. Raiders have not had the greatest season they've had a decent season but i think that they're barely going to pull it off against the 16 um against this uh i guess the cincinnati Bengals. now the raiders had an up and down season including the firing of their their head coach uh, john gruden who was fired for sending inappropriate emails and uh well actually I guess he resigned, technically. He would have been fired had he not resigned. And a lot of people thought that the Raiders, who were really a sinking ship at that time, were going to mail it in. Uh, and in fact, the Raiders found themselves in the midst of a 1-5 a streak, including a loss to the New York Giants, who are one of the worst football teams this year in the league. And then they get a new coach, and they get reinvigorated, and everything starts to change, and they finish off the season... Uh, you know, and I'm not going to count their, you know, the last loss or whatever. But uh, they finish off the season on a winning streak, and uh, they're a kind of a sleeper team right now. I, I don't, I don't feel very confident in the Raiders. You know, Derek Carr is a good quarterback. Um, he had a, a very good season. I, I don't know that the Raiders scare me. If they were home, I think that gives the Raiders an advantage. An advantage. If they were in Vegas, uh, they have some of the craziest fans out there. Um, I think the Bengals are a more well put together team at this point. And uh, Joe Burrow, very young quarterback, had himself a big season. 34 touchdowns, 4,600 yards. And they have a great running game as well uh, with Mixon, uh, Jamar Chase. A huge year. One of the best ride receivers in the NFL, 1,400 yards. I think the Bengals have a much stronger offense than the Raiders. Raiders are a, a good team, but I think, uh, although I have – my concerns with the Bengals, too, I don't, I don't think the Bengals' journey is going to go very far, but I think it goes far enough that they're able to knock off the Raiders at home by a final score of 23-17. to 17. You changed my mind about that game. I'm not going to lie, you did. I'm starting to think the Bengals are going to win. They have a way better offense than the Raiders. The Raiders have a good offense, but I think the Bengals are going to take it home. I'm going to say 21-17. to 17. So we're pretty much in the same boat there with that prediction. So, uh, again, wild card weekend kicks off uh, this Saturday. Here's the whole slate of games. Uh, we'll, we'll take you through them. So on Saturday, the early game features the, uh, the Las, Las Vegas Raiders visiting Cincinnati. That's at 4.30 on NBC. Then Saturday night, 8.15, kickoff uh, in Buffalo on CBS as they take on the Patriots. On Sunday, the 1 o'clock game, the Eagles visit the Bucks on Fox. The 4.30 game, Dallas hosts the Niners on CBS. Um, the Sunday night game on NBC, that'll be the Steelers visiting the Chiefs. And the final game for the first time ever, we mentioned it before, a Monday night playoff game. We'll find the Cardinals traveling to Los Angeles to take on the Rams. That's an 8.15 kickoff, and that will be on ESPN. Final thoughts as we head into Wild Card Weekend. They're all going to be very good games, very close. But I think ev they're all going to do good. I just don't think that certain teams are going to be able to bring it home. And I think they're going to be disappointed in what's going to end up happening to their coaches. Well, what I do know is it should be a lot of fun. It's a holiday for football fans, whether your team's in it or not, whether you have a dog in the fight or not. And there are six games to hold you over Saturday, Sunday, and even Monday night. Should be a lot of fun. We'll check in with you next week, see how we did with our predictions. See if we know what we're talking about. There's a good chance we don't know anything. Nobody else does either, and that's what makes it special and a lot of fun. This has been Playoff Edition of the NFL Experience for Aiden Fonsetto. I'm Matt Grice, and we will see you soon. Enjoy the football playoffs, everyone, and have a good afternoon here on the Comedy Book Broadcasting Network.